Hey guys, it's Navardo here from MIA Bladeworks. About a week ago, we put out an intro video for this Benchmade Mini Infidel that we got in for a client, and it wasn't functioning well, it wasn't deploying. Uh, what's playing right now on the screen is um, that intro video. So you'll see in a couple seconds, uh, we try and get the blade to deploy, and the knife doesn't deploy. Um, so we put this video together to show you the process of how we went ahead and repaired it um, right now through the intro video is just going to keep playing and you'll see again a series of malfunctions uh, the tip on this thing was pretty beat up uh, guy who owns it is an armed forces uh, guy and he uses it quite a bit um, so the tip was dull the blades uh, edges on both sides were dull and the knife was just generally dirty and not functioning so you'll see as this continues to go, the knife doesn't deploy, um, gets stuck, pretty much useless at this point. It does not work. Uh, the tip's so dull, I can push it in with my fingers. So um, we're just continuing to go through the knife as we received it, and you see that it does not function. Um, these knives, from what I've heard from plenty of clients, is that uh, Benchmade takes forever to get them back to you. Um, as far as I know, Benchmade has an awesome warranty and uh, good customer service, but apparently it takes a while to get these serviced by Benchmade. Um, so I'll gladly do the service if you guys aren't willing to do it yourselves. Um, the knife is a little bit complicated, but uh, once you get used to it, it's not too bad. The hardest part's the least brings, and we'll get to that further on in the video. So is getting to the end of the intro clip and now we get into disassembly so right now to not bore you guys <laughs> with the full-time video uh, this disassembly video is going probably about four times the natural speed <laughs> but it gets you through the process quick um, there's six screws on either side of the knife and the button uh, is retained by two pins so um, you will notice as you disassemble the knife that the screws on one side are longer than the other. Um, the short screws go on the back side where the clip is. Um, there's actually eight of those screws because there's two clips for the, uh, sorry, there's two screws for the clip as well. Um, so there's six long screws, six short screws, and an additional two short screws for the clip. You see us taking this knife apart, you'll see all the grit falling out of it. Uh, knife has quite a bit of dirt in it um, I mean at the end of the day these are supposed to be hard use tools so dirt should be able to get in and out but these knives malfunction even with pocket lint so just a tiniest bit of grit in there they do not deploy like they're supposed to So when you take the knife apart, there's two trays. Uh, basically, they guide the blade uh, in and out. Uh, and then you have the leaf spring assembly, uh, which is what shoots the blade out and uh, retracts the blade. Uh, there's all the parts scattered on our bench. So I'm not sure how well you could see the dirt buildup in the case. But these Benchmade Mini Infidels do not do well with even pocket lint, much less like actual hard use dirt, uh, say from a soldier. Uh, this particular knife came from somebody from that's in the armed forces, and they actually use it for what it's for. And unfortunately, this knife does not handle it well. The moment you get that much dirt in it, the action does not work as in the intro video when we received the knife. Um, right now I'm basically putting all the parts in a soapy bath, cleaning everything up, and then it goes from here to being oiled up and lubricated, and then reassembly and functioning like factory. 
Um, and then we got to get into sharpening. These are a few shots of the knife on the wicked edge. So because we fully disassembled it, we were able to put it on the wicked edge and use the wicked edge. Uh, sharpening this knife on a wicked edge without fully disassembling it is quite difficult. Uh, there's a new adapter now, but um, without the adapter is even almost impossible. So this is the blade with one side finished and the other side uh, still as is. These knives normally have almost a chisel grind. There's a tiny bevel on one side just to clean up the burr and then the sec true secondary bevels on the other side. Um, in this case to bring this knife back into shape we had to basically sharpen both sides of it and get rid of that micro bevel and just put a real secondary bevel. Uh, this is now the knife with both sides of it sharpened. Um, we took it to a mirrored edge just like we do with most of our knives. So now there's a sharp blade that once was a butter knife. And now back to reassembly. So the first step is putting the four uh, basically pins where the arms rotate on. There's the four pins back on. Then putting a drop of lube on all four because that's where the pins are going to, um, yeah, the pins are going to rotate on. So then go back to four, it's not column pins, the, the four um, arms, spring arms. So these arms are what shoot the blade out and retract the blade. And then they're connected with a leaf spring. Well, three leaf springs. So there's six leaf springs in total, three on each side. The most challenging part about this service is these leaf springs. So right now, I'm putting the three leaf springs together in a pack. Uh, they do not stick together. They're all separate, as you see on the bottom left-hand side. And then you have to... Um, finesse those three together as one into the spring slot. Uh, you're going to see on this part, I, I try this probably about seven or eight times before I get the spring pack to go in where it's supposed to go and all stay together. Uh, it's a little bit frustrating and there may be a better way to do it, but I don't know how. Um, what I do is normally stack all three springs together, try and get them to engage on one side put it on the spring catch and then uh, to put tension on it um, put pressure and swing it onto the other arm so you clip it into one arm first align it right and then try and get it onto the second arm um, it's quite difficult uh, and you'll see I continue to fumble it until I get it just right Patience is key on this part. But finally, got it to clip in, and that's what it looks like. Now for the other side. I think on this side I got lucky and only had to readjust the springs about three times before I got them to go into where they were supposed to go. There we go. So that's both sets of springs, leaf springs, in on the two uh, sides, and then you have the four arms that control the blade.
it's key that when you put the blade in you don't put it in upside down so that part there's two sides they're different the blade goes with the circles up the notches up and then that piece goes on top and then the spring mechanism that functions the button goes on top of that now I just put the spring in there backwards I adjusted the cap and now I know which way it goes so I fixed it um, right now that spring is still loose so you when you put the spring in there you gotta make sure that the little arms catch at the bottom and that it goes all the way down so it's still loose it's not in the I continue to adjust now until I make sure that that piece is clipped in unfortunately right now I'm doing a voiceover so you don't see hear the snap but in the video right now once I engage it there's a section that you can see it click in right there so once you attach the spring on the knife end you gotta push that whole assembly forward until it clips into place otherwise it'll bind uh, when you put the second cap on these two springs are what work with the button to move the blade so when you move the button forward, the, it, re, the, it breaks free from the arms and that spring shoots it forward. Then the arms catch it on the top end. When you push the button back, it breaks it free from the arms again. The other spring shoots it backwards. So at, um, at any one of the actions, what you're trying to do is make sure that the blade disengages from the lower arms and fully engages on the upper arms. Um, otherwise, the knife stays free like in the beginning of the video so this is the paperclip trick just to test the knife because it's a pain to put the button on and find out that the knife doesn't work so with a paperclip you can actuate it and see the knife shoots back shoots in shoots back shoots in so do that a couple times I probably did it a couple times too many but now you know the knife works here I screwed up and left the blade out so it's a good idea to put the blade back before you put the button in because now it's a sharp blade before it was dull but now that knife will cut me easily so retract the blade then you can put the button back in the button as you saw when we removed it it's just two pins uh, so you just make sure you're on the right side because the, the pins go in from opposite sides and then take a punch set it might need a little tap a couple taps from a hammer to get it going And then drive it home. So with the button back in, knife functions like it did from factory. In and out.